Good afternoon, church family. Uh, once again, we find ourselves here for another uh, digital Vespers service. Now, as we move into the summer months and the days get longer, um, the idea of a Vespers service, where at the end of it, we are at the end of the day, the end of the Sabbath, uh, in terms of time, starts to, to, to kind of be stretched a little bit. But I still trust and believe uh, that having a moment uh, for the first Sabbath of every month where we get to pause, we get to hear wonderful music, and we get to reflect um, on something about the goodness and the greatness of God in our lives uh, continues to be something that is a blessing for all of you. I certainly know um, it is for me. It's been a couple of months since I've been here with you, although I have been watching from home and I've been blessed by, by the amazing Vespers that we have and today is going to be no exception. I'm so excited to introduce our guest musician for today, although guest is, a, is an interesting term uh, to describe this individual. He is none other than our greatly beloved uh, Mr. Steve Martin. Now, Mr. Martin, of course, uh, has served our school faithfully uh, for three decades. Uh, and I remember uh, not too long ago, uh, broke the world record for uh, the most amount of instruments uh, played uh, in our very school gym. And uh, what, a, what an amazing evening that was and has uh, served also uh, in our church worship services, adding beautiful music uh, at, at many uh, occasions. And so to have him uh, being here with us today is, of course, going to be an amazing blessing. And the theme for today's Vespers is going home. I don't know what that conjures in your mind, but I trust that as we listen to this music and as we allow the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts through it, that we will be blessed and we will be filled with a desire to go to our eternal home. So let us pray as we start this Vespers together. Father God, we thank you so much for this amazing opportunity that you have given us. We thank you for the amazing talent that you have blessed Mr. Martin with and that he has stewarded all these years. We pray, Lord, that the music we hear would just encourage and inspire our hearts and that people perhaps uh, who we do not have the privilege of knowing yet will stumble across this music, this video, and would listen and be touched and encouraged and inspired. Thank you so much for loving us and thank you for this opportunity. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Wow, what uh, an amazing piece of music we've just heard. And of course, in some ways, we have come to expect nothing less um, from our amazing friend, uh, Mr. Martin. I just want to spend a few moments thinking and reflecting on the word redeem. The word redeem, as we think about the theme, uh, going home, it brings to our minds the idea of one day, by the grace of God, making it into his kingdom. And when you get there, when I get there, it will be because of this word, redeem. It will be because of our redeemer. And what does this word mean? Well, I want to share with you just very briefly, we uh, have been having uh, family worships with uh, the girls and, and uh, those in our household. Um, now that school is out and they are home for the summer months, um, it allows us to have a little bit more flexibility in the mornings. And so we've been uh, meeting sort of mid-morning and we've been doing something uh, called Daily Light on the Daily Path. Daily Light on the Daily Path. It's a resource uh, for uh, devotions and, and things of that nature. I, I highly recommend you look it up. It's actually very old. It's been around uh, for over 150 years, uh, but I, this is not what this is about. But anyway, in one of our devotions, we were reading this devotional, reading the verses that were put together for the day. And the theme of the verses was around this word, redeem, around this word, redeem. And it's a word that we use fairly frequently within Christian circles. But actually, as I thought about it, I didn't really know how to define it. And so we went and looked it up. And uh, it, it, the word means literally uh, to, to make up or to pay for the faults of someone or something or the bad aspects of something, to compensate for the faults or bad aspects of someone or something. And as, as we thought about that definition, uh, it, it really brought an interesting picture to mind. And it made us reflect on what are our faults? What faults do I have? Uh, what bad aspects are there in my life, in my character? Or maybe uh, we could think more broadly as, as a family, as a, as a church, as a nation. What are our faults? What are our bad aspects? And who or how can they be compensated for? How can we be redeemed? So one of the verses that we read as a part of that devotional, I would like to share with you now. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. It goes as follows. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You were not redeemed by things like silver and gold, perishable things like silver and gold. Now, most of us would love to have uh, silver and gold riches uh, that, that those precious metals would afford us. But here, Paul is saying, listen, in comparison to the precious blood of Jesus, those are perishable things. Those are things that are not even worth discussing. And, but then in the middle of these two verses, he, he mentions this idea that we are being redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to us by our ancestors. I recently had an amazing conversation just after Father's Day uh, with my father uh, and my brother. And what we were talking about was uh, my grandfather, whose name uh, was Darnley Burnett, but who I never had the privilege of meeting. But not only did I never have the privilege of meeting him, my own father, whose name is David Burnett, never had the privilege of meeting him either. Um, in a story that is perhaps familiar uh, to immigrant families, 
My grandfather, Danny Burnett, moved from Barbados, uh, his home country, all the way to London, England, uh, to work to provide for his wife and uh, eight children. And my father was the youngest of his children. And so he, uh, as many people who are a part of that Windrush generation, which is what we call the individuals who moved from the West Indies, the Caribbean, to England in the, in the 50s and 60s. As many people are part of the Windrush generation, he would work, he would save, and he would bring a member of his family over, first his wife and then his daughters, and finally uh, his two sons, my dad being the youngest of all his children. Well, tragedy struck, and my grandfather, Danny, got sick and died before my father, who was 12 years old at the time that he actually moved to England, before he was able to arrive. And so he never got to meet his father in the flesh. And so you can imagine how disorienting that might be. You can imagine how uh, uh, difficult that might be for a young man. And then to get to be of age, to have your own children and your own sons, what do you pass on? Or how, I should say, do you pass on to them what you maybe didn't receive yourself? And so as we had this conversation together, one of the things that we discovered in the conversation, and actually we never really intentionally talked about Grandad in this way, the three of us, but one of the things that we discovered was that so many of the things that typified his life, that typified his values, he was a man of faith, he was a man of family, he was a man of ambition and hard work. All of many of those things we found reflected in ourselves. And so even though we had never physically got to meet him, we recognized his essence. We recognized his values. We recognized his inheritance in us. And so that's something to be proud of. That's something to celebrate. And that was a wonderful moment around Father's Day when we reflected on that and thought about how we may be leaving a legacy for our own children. But the truth is that we do not only inherit from our ancestors. We do not only inherit from our predecessors good qualities. We also inherit weaknesses. We inherit faults. We inherit blemishes. We, in, we inherit uh, uh, perishable, uh, destructive, negative characteristics. And who makes up for that? Who compensates for that? Well, this verse tells us it's our Redeemer. We cannot be redeemed by silver and gold that we can get through hard work or ingenuity or or perhaps a little bit of luck. We cannot be redeemed simply by uh, making better choices, although that's great. We cannot be redeemed by, uh, you know, just trying harder or, or, or therapy, which is very important, uh, or, 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 or character reform. All of those, these things may have their place, but we can only be redeemed. The only way we will be able to go home and meet our friends and family around the table. Go home and meet them in the air. Be together with the Lord forever. The only way we will be able to do that is if we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. If it is Jesus who pays the price. And the amazing thing is that Jesus has already undertaken to make compensation, to make recompense for my faults, my brokenness, for your faults, and for your brokenness. May I encourage you as I encourage myself to grasp hold of the Redeemer, to live each day understanding that redemption draws nigh, to not be distracted by the perishing and perishable things of this world. Attractive 
and glittering though they may be, but to focus our eyes on the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and to follow that Lamb who is Jesus wherever he goes and wherever he leads. Let us pray in the name of our Redeemer. Father God, we thank you so much that you have redeemed us from our faults and bad aspects by the blood of Jesus. We thank you that that blood speaks peace and power over our lives. Lord, may we live each and every day recognizing how precious our redemption is. And may we not trade the blood of Jesus for any of these perishable things that the world seeks to offer us. And may we be able to go home at last to meet our Lord and Savior face to face. And while my father and myself and my brother never got a chance to see our granddad, many of us may be have similar stories or are grieving the loss of loved ones, we are so grateful that because of the redemption through the blood of Jesus, we will have the privilege and the possibility to spend eternity together with them. And truly what a day of rejoicing that will be. We thank you for hearing these prayers because we have prayed them in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen.
Thank you so much for staying to the end with us. What an amazing uh, Vespers this has been. Uh, if you were blessed, and how could you not have been, uh, would you do us a favor? Please share this video, share this link with someone else. We don't want this to simply be a blessing to you. We would love it to be a blessing to others. Also, I want to encourage you, if for some reason you have not subscribed to our channel, would you just go ahead and subscribe right now? If you liked what you heard, perhaps even hit the like button. That's going to help us to be able to continue to provide beautiful music and messages like this to so many people. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your prayers. And let's just end, let's just close out as we come to the end of this week and as we head in uh, to this amazing uh, celebration of independence that we have uh, in this great country. Let's just end with a prayer asking God to continue to bless us and guide us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for all we have heard and experienced. Thank you for this weekend when we reflect upon independence and freedom and the great blessings that you have blessed us with, not here just as a nation, but that you have blessed us with as a human race because of what Jesus has done. May the message of this Vespers continue to reverberate in our heart as the music fades. Nevertheless, may the song of redemption continue to sing itself in our minds. And Lord, may we share this great news with all we meet. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great evening. Have a great end to the Sabbath. And God bless you and see you sometime soon.